Okay, so I assume you're an AP test taker, at least you're considering it. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of the things that might affect your decision about whether you want to stick with the test or bail out of the test. So they're allowing you to bail out with no cost. So if you've paid already, you'll get it back. If you have uh, not paid already, you won't be charged. Um, so here is, first of all, the timeline. So we're in the Eastern time zone. And um, so on Monday the 11th, it's a week after it was originally scheduled, at noon is when the mechanics test would be, and then the E&M one to follow at 2 o'clock. Now, there were two hours um, already, but remember, it used to be an hour and a half exam. Now it's only a 45-minute exam. So you'll have about a, a little over an hour in between to kind of catch your breath or whatever. A um, couple other things further down here. I'm going to go to something specific to the exams. So here's the times. Um, there will be two free response questions. Those are like what you've seen me use on AP Ready Quiz. It's not the multiple choice. There are no multiple choice. Um, one of them you're going to have 25 minutes to read and respond, and the other you will have 15 minutes. In between, there will be a five-minute upload time. That means... Um, Actually, after each of those two, there will be a five-minute upload time. So that means uh, if you decided to just type your answer or write your answer into the box on their little portal on a computer, um, then that's a pretty quick upload. But if you're doing it on a piece of paper, like you're allowed to do my quizzes, you can snap a picture, you can upload it to the website. Um, now, we've never done this for AP tests before, and we could have you know thousands of people doing this all at the same time. There are some teachers that are worried about the, just the bandwidth. Are they going to be able to handle all of that at once? Um, who knows? Hopefully, they've got it figured out. So this, the rest of this goes into the detail of the, of the two questions. So again, one is 25 minutes and one is 15 minutes. They are weighted a little bit differently. That kind of makes sense. Um, they describe the question a little bit, but it's a little ambiguous. So, um, you know, I'd say this first one sounds a lot like a lot of the FRQs that we've looked at before. So you're going to have a diagram. They're going to ask you a series of questions. Now, what they cannot do on this, because you're typing an answer or you have the ability to type an answer into the computer and they're not making you do things like drawings and equations and derivations, none of that is going to be included in this. So it's going to be more like writing like paragraphs and sentences. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is very different from what I've ever prepared for as far as an AP test. Um, the second one is to design and evaluate a lab experiment. And I've shown you those lab-related questions. We did one of those, gosh, at the end of the first quarter, um, where they'll maybe give you a list of lab equipment and say, Describe how you could set up an experiment to measure this or to demonstrate this. Um, and then maybe it's things like, I would not be shocked if they had, the, had you linearize. Just maybe talk about um, what linearizing would mean. So um, obviously we practiced a lot of that and we practice more. Um, so there's some descriptions here of some other FRQs that we've used. What bothers a lot of AP teachers is that um, what they used as an example for the first one is actually not a calculus-based physics example. So there is another kind of AP physics class called AP Physics 1 and AP Physics 2. They are algebra-based courses. They are very, very descriptive and less like mathematical. There's not a lot of like equation deriving and things like that. There's no calculus, as I said. So a lot of the teachers of the calculus-based course, like, like ours, are saying, like, why are they using that as an example? That's a totally different course. So they're kind of worried about it. I say, if you know your physics, you should be fine with whatever they give you. Okay. Um, so the units for this, we're not including units six and seven, which doesn't mean anything to you, but does not include gravitation and does not include oscillation, simple harmonic motion. That was the last unit of what we did in uh, the first semester. So um, everything up through rotation. Yes, rotation will be included. Okay, so a few other things that they're telling you here um, really probably doesn't mean a whole lot. 
Um, I want to show you a couple other things as well. We'll go back and look at e &M in just a second. So um, they're going to have a little bit more information in late April, which is getting kind of late. Um, and you can bail out at any time, so it's not like you have to decide right now. Um, they're going to try to prevent uh, cheating, and there's a lot of different ways they're going to do this, but there's going to be different versions of the test going out at the same time. So if somebody is trying to go onto a Reddit and share information and things like that, it's not going to work very well. And if you're caught um, cheating, and it's going to be pretty obvious, they're going to report that cheating to every college that a student has applied to. Um, or any college that they will apply to. So um, they they have told us in a little webinar that I was on last week, they're not even revealing all the different security measures that they use, but they have a lot of them. And so they say they will very likely catch people trying to share information across the, you know, the social media world or however else. Um, let's see, you don't need to worry about number three. I'm going to get a copy of the exam. Um, you will submit your responses on the same device you retrieve the exam. So if you're using a laptop to download the exam, you have to put your answers on in the laptop. Um, so you can't have two devices open at once, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um, you can have them open, but you just can't use, like, do the test on both of them. And they say they're going to provide some videos or simulations on how, to, so you can practice how you're going to actually access all of this. So, you know, that's... That's kind of a lot there um, to kind of soak in. Let me go back to the e &M page because we didn't click on that. Here we go. I mean, it's the same basic stuff except for the kinds of questions. Um, actually, no, I take that back. It is all the same information. So um, now they're not including topics four and five. So the good news for us is four and five are the topics that we're doing like right now and that we'll do next. So everything that's going to be on the exam, we actually finished before we left for spring break and the extended, you know, e-learning. So we've seen it all. You've done as many labs as, I mean, probably anybody, nobody else I know of in the country has a lab period every day. So you're plenty prepared for that. Second question that's kind of a lab-related question, as you can see here, it says graphical analysis, find physical quantities, sources of experimental variation. That's that's thinking about error. Um, so what I need you to consider is um, if you want to stick with trying to get your college credit and taking the exams, then what you're going to do is probably starting next Monday, I'm just going to put you on a different track. Um, you'll be using AP Classroom. I've got to kind of figure that out. I've not used it this year because it, it was really kind of clunky and a lot of teachers have had frustrations with it. And I said to myself, why am I going to use something that's not really ready yet? Um, they rolled it out, I think, about a year too early. But a lot of people have worked out the bugs. And so um, it's time to dive in. And um, I will do my level best to get you ready for that May 11th um, exam or exams. And um, you still have the option of taking one exam if you wish. All of you that are going to do the exams had told me you wanted to do both of them. And so if you still think you can do okay and, and get your college credits, absolutely. Let's go for it. Um, if you don't do well, you know, what are you out? You're out a little bit of money, obviously. Um, but, you know, you're no worse off. Um, I'm not going to feel bad. I'm not going to hold it against you and say, gosh, why didn't they do better? I mean, we're just in a weird situation this year. So... Um, mull that over, and um, and we'll try to talk. I'm, I want to like get in touch with you. I'm not sure when that's going to be yet, but um, if you want to talk with me, of course you can chime chime in on the um, on the Google Meet from 10 to 11:30 today or any day, and we can hash it out a little bit. Every situation is just a little different. So if you want to talk it over with your folks, um, obviously there's a lot of money. I mean, some of you are paying a couple hundred bucks for this, so you know that's something you want to consider too. So just Talk that over, and um, and then by the end of the week, we'll we'll have to make a decision. So, um, if you decide you do want to bail out, I will actually. I think um, everybody should have gotten information from Mr. White about how to do that, but I can let you know um, what that entails. So, all right, gosh, that's gone on a long time. Sorry, um, maybe you've played me on fast forward or something. So, all right, we'll talk soon. Y'all take care.